Welcome back. There is a deep-seated hatred for and fear of black people by many Americans. The words of Patricia williams Lassan, who was speaking with us live from Charleston just moments ago. We have re-established contact, and we apologize for the technical problems. Do you think that's really true? Is racism built into this country? Is it in the hearts of many Americans? Oh, I definitely think that's the case. Um, we see it playing out in the narratives that we um, see in the in the media, the way that our president is um, described and stereotyped and um, caricatured, the way that uh, uh, black children are uh, considered thugs, and when their white counterparts do the same sorts of things, they kind of are, um, are, are said to have had mental illness. Or, I mean, there's there's definitely um, a narrative where black people are consistently and historically being, you know, described as you know, violent, savage, wild, and that, um, and this is this isn't anything new. And I think that um, we have all these you know, these new um, incidents that come up and um, it speaks to that, that fear and loathing of black people, well, for sure. Can, can I ask you about this? Because you, you're really painting with a very broad brush. The African-American experience is, is unique in the tragedy of what, of what it has represented over the centuries. But there are a lot of gay and lesbian Americans who will tell you that they have been discriminated against mm -hmm. and they face that every day. Handicapped Americans feel they are discriminated against and face that every day. Asian Americans are suing to try and get into colleges who say, they say, are, are keeping them out because of their race. There are so many groups in this country that have, have really big and important grievances. Is, is just that the nature of living in a big, complicated society that there's a lot of injustice built into uh. this for everybody? I, th I think you're oversimplifying it for sure. Um, you know, the experiences of black people is far different from all of the groups that you have described, and I am not trying to diminish anybody's struggle. Let me be clear about that. But let me just say that in terms of disparities in uh, employment and quality education and health, um, the impact that gentrification has had on uh, black lives, uh, black, uh, you know, upward mobility in terms of uh, people not being able to hold on to their homes because of the, the rising taxes that, that, that come along with gentrification. Uh, with a place like historic Charleston, of course, there are easements that are put on homes that many African Americans well, Forgive me have, for jumping. I want to jump in on exactly um, that ahead, thought sorry, yeah. and exactly what you're mm -hmm. saying, which is that Charleston, of mm -hmm. course, it's not by accident it seems that the killer chose Charleston and, and Charleston was and this is not familiar to, to many people around the world it was in a sense the capital of the American slave trade does all of this resonate more because of the city where you've chosen to make your home oh well uh, it, it, it hurts even more but I would like to just point out that the history of Charleston is very complicated. I mean, this is a place that is um, that prizes itself on historic preservation, um, but there are many levels to the the story of, of of Charleston. It is a beautiful place to live, but however, um, at one point, blacks were the majority in Charleston, and right where I'm standing right now, um, African Americans have been displaced at, at alarming rates. So that on the peninsula where it was overwhelmingly black at one point. Now we have uh, maybe 20% of African-Americans. But you will, of course, see African-Americans in service jobs on the peninsula. So uh, there's, you know, there's so many levels to this, but, um, you know, the fact that, you know, this guy chose Mother Emanuel, a historic church established by free people of cover color, formerly enslaved Africans who were who were, you know, determined to be self-determined and to have agency. This was the home church of Denmark Vesey, a revolutionary free man who started a slave revolt. Unfortunately, it was cut down. Um, and so this this is, again, and if these words were Dylan Roof's authentic words, of course this was not, you know, by happenstance that he chose this church, for sure. Patricia williams Lassan of the Avery Research Center at the College of Charleston. Thanks so much for talking to us. Thank you.